Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of the Paranormal Journals right here on Black Mass Paranormal. So in this episode, i got something a little bit crazy to talk about. And this occurred in the Appalachian Mountains. So one of my subscribers, Mason, emailed me a pretty heartbreaking story. Over the past several years, I have been doing research trying to determine whether or not there are actually feral people living within the Appalachian Mountains. Now, I have been on tons of trails. I have found some pretty convincing evidence. In 2014, Mason had been out hiking around on some family property in the Appalachian Mountains. The area that Mason was in was outside of a town called Del Rio. Now, this particular piece of land is, again, right along the border of Tennessee and North Carolina. Now, Mason said that him and his dog were out walking around and just enjoying the mountains. He said that he was on a trail that was not part of uh, the national park, that the area that he was in was basically just kind of um, a non-tourist type area. He said the majority of the land that he was out running around on was essentially privately owned. Now, in the Appalachian Mountains, there are a lot of families that own hundreds and hundreds of acres of the Appalachian Mountains. These areas are basically completely private. Now, Mason said that when he was, him and his dog were out running around uh, in the woods, he said that his dog started acting strange. Mason said that his dog, Bo, started to kind of circle him and started, like, trying to get him to go back to from where they came. And Mason didn't really think much about this. He knew his dog pretty well, and he thought that his dog just might be spooked of something. Now, there are bears in this area, so he just kind of thought that maybe the dog was trying to warn him about another predator that was possibly up the trail. Mason and his dog, Bo, continue moving, moving up the trail about a quarter of a mile. He said at that point, Bo's demeanor completely changed. He went from being protective to aggressive. He said that Bo started growling and barking, but Mason couldn't determine exactly what he was barking at. Then he said his dog just took off. So in a panic, Mason starts running down through the woods, trying to get a hold of his dog. At one point, he said that he starts hearing his dog yelping like he was in pain. Now, Mason at this point was absolutely terrified and didn't know exactly what had just happened to his dog. He thought, he said he initially thought that the dog had fell because the sound that it made, it kind of sounded like that Bo had fallen kind of down maybe a ravine or a hill. And they approached a small ravine. Now, as he gets closer to this ravine, Mason remembers saying that he that he saw these large rock formations that were protruding out of the side of the mountain. As Mason gets around this curve where his dog, Bo, had taken off, he said he looks down in this holler and sees a man with no clothes on. He said that the man's back was really scarred up and hairy. Mason started screaming for his dog, trying to get him to come to him. But then he realized that the man had actually gotten a hold of his dog. Now, Mason said 
that his dog Bo had just bit the shit out of this man. That the guy was bleeding profusely from his chest, from his arms. He said that Bo fought him tooth and nail. But unfortunately, the man ended up killing Mason's dog. Once Mason looks down and he sees Bo's lifeless body, he's obviously in a state of absolute panic and shock. He said that he would never forget how the man turned and looked at him. He said that the man slowly turned around while grasping onto his dog and looked Mason directly in the eye. Mason said that the man's eyes were completely white, that he couldn't see any coloring whatsoever in this individual's eyes. Now, obviously, when you're in the woods and you lose your best friend, it, want, it sends a bit of rage through your body. Mason said he started to head towards this man that had just killed his dog when he started to hear some strange sound. He said as he was, as he was looking at this man, he started to hear a clicking sound coming from a different direction. At this point, Mason felt like he had been completely surrounded by something. He didn't know what because he didn't see anybody else. As Mason gathered himself and tried to grasp what had just happened, he said that the man stood up and turned and faced him. Mason said that that's when he noticed that this individual was pretty disfigured. He said that his left shoulder was almost twice the size of his right. He said that his jawline didn't seem human. That it was almost really squared off and kind of distorted looking. Which, in these reports, that's what we are commonly hearing is that these individuals often suffer from some sort of eye disease in which their eyes turn white and their jaw lines become extremely disfigured. Mason said that at that point, he realized that he just had to get himself out of there. He said he turned and he ran as fast as he possibly could through the woods towards what he knew <clears throat> of a back road being close by. Mason sprinted all the way through the woods, down tripping and falling over himself. He said that he had fell about three or four times just because he was so distraught and so um, overwhelmed with a, the emotion of losing his dog that he didn't even know what, what he was doing. But he knew that he had to get to the road. Now Mason finally gets to this road. In which he happens to wave down an old farm truck. When the truck initially came by. He noticed that the rear plate actually said farm use only. Which is a pretty common thing that happens around in the Appalachian Mountains. There's a lot of people that do not register their vehicles for road use, but they will use them on the farm and sometimes will kind of go back and forth um, between the land and the road. Mason said that he gets in the car with this old man and he starts trying to get his story out. He's trying to explain to the man that what just happened. And he said that the man slowly started to pull the truck over. 
he stopped and he looked at him. And he said that those are the people that you've always been warned about. Mason didn't know what to think. He wasn't sure that if he was interacting with this guy who knew these people or that he had some sort of connection to them. But Mason jumps out of the truck and he starts running. He makes it all the way to his friend's house where he's finally safe and he tries to contact the sheriff. Now, he didn't go into much explanation to exactly what the sheriff said, but essentially there wasn't a whole lot that the sheriff could do because it was just, at the end of the day, it was just a dog. And, you know, these smaller sheriff departments, they don't really have the funding to go out and search for these types of encounters. <clears throat> With that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Paranormal Journals. I found it absolutely fascinating. Mason, brother, I am so sorry to what happened to you. Um, years ago, uh, it absolutely breaks my heart. Um, my dog is everything to me. I absolutely love him. I can't even imagine losing an animal in a situation like that. But at least, you know, Bo got his licks in. Um, so if y'all are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Uh, do me a favor, give this video a like and turn on notifications, but make sure they're set on all. Uh, that way you know that I'm out here running my mouth or doing something crazy again. Now, members, um, I'm going to be putting some um, kind of exploration type videos up, uh, just kind of, of me going out and checking out some things um, that didn't quite make it to the channel. So I hope you all enjoy that stuff. Um, I'm got a ton of trail cam footage that I got to get uploaded running behind on that but um, other than that guys I hope you all have a great day and we'll see you next time